We want to look at using the M-Panel Model Builder tool to add a corner plate onto a structure which is uh, perhaps an umbrella or, or a six-sided uh, conic. And we need to consider that when we do add the corner plate, the corner plate of course is going to be parametrically defined here, but it's going to be flat. And so we need to consider if the area around the corner where we're going to fit, fit it in is substantially flat, so that we can accept an, uh, an approximation. And looking at this, uh, looking at this one here, we've got a fairly low-rise conic, looks pretty flat around here, we'd probably get away with that. If we had a higher-rise conic, we might have to have a little bit more of a thought about whether it was acceptable or not. Um, we'll, we would normally, I suppose, put in a corner plate on, on each corner, but since the structure is symmetrical, we might as well just put it in on one corner. And the way, uh, we've got several ways on the corner plate options to say wh which corner to put it on. We can either do it at every polyline node or if we're doing just one corner, we'd often do it, mark it just with a cyan line. So I'll just draw in a line here and colour it cyan. And the only purpose of, the, of that cyan line is to mark that we're going to insert that uh, uh, corner plate in, in this area. The uh, parameters for this corner plate are set up with the clamp plate radius, um, the clamp plate width, the reinforcement, um, where, where everything is measured from the front side of this clamp plate. So for instance the reinforcement distance here is measured forwards from, from, uh, from that edge. And I can go in now and just run those into there to where we get the clamp plate installed um, correctly in the corner with the right number of um, bolts, right spacing and the right angle between the two. Now we would presumably make this uh, from at least six different panels and maybe twelve and we'll look at doing this um, out of twelve panels. So what I'll do is I'll take a copy uh, of this and I'll set it up to make 12 panels um, so what we'll do is we'll do two panels per mesh so I've selected here one of the meshes plus that corner detail I'll just quickly set this up to make two panels and we'll drop those two panels out like so and I'll drop the two panels out for the for the other side again making sure that I select the mesh and the corner detail and drop those out like so and get rid of the old meshes and and here are the uh, here are the panels with the with the corner plate included um, in terms of making the actual corner plate into uh, into both the reinforcement patch, the uh, corner plate itself and the rebated corners, there are a couple of steps that we need to go through. So first I'm going to copy these, these panels over here and I'm going to put in a uh, seam allowance. Actually first let's just spread these panels apart a little bit using the spread panels radially tool and we'll now add a seam allowance to both of those those panels just a regular seam allowance and deleting the old panels here. Now on those on those seamed panels we'd now want those panels to be 
cut in, that is rebated, to allow for the cable um, uh, structure there on the corner. And we'd also want the panel to be truncated in the corners uh, to allow for, uh, to, so we don't have fabric sticking out the back of the, the metal plates there. And we can do that um, from these seamed panels using the, the seam option to add the rebate to marked seamed panels. And I'll go ahead and delete the old one. And you can see that on each of the panels here we've got the, the remains of the, the panel detail um, included on, showing where the bolts are going to go through and so on. We've got the, the cable cut out on the, uh, the side here which is going to uh, fold over and uh, will, in will encompass the cable in the corner and the same the same on the the same on the other side we've got two other things that we need to do um, we've got to produce a, uh, a a reinforcement patch and also the the finished plate now it may be that you would want to make the reinforcement patch in two pieces so again here I've just got my, my panels which I'm going to spread out, these are, these are unseamed and I'm going to um, just spread them out a little bit and if we wanted to make uh, the reinforcement patches separately for each panel, that is that we were going to make them and then uh, apply them over the panels and, and weld the whole thing together then we can just um, create the reinforcement patch from the marked unseamed panels run that tool and we'll get the reinforcement patches drawn out in, in here and you can see them sitting there in white um, above, the, above the original panels that are in red but quite commonly what we want to do is to have a single reinforcement patch that runs over both panels and to do this what we have to do is we have to join together um, the panels and there are a couple of kind of awkward stages here uh, the first is that when we join these panels together which of course we'll do with the M panel um, merge panels tool um, that always uh, introduces some distortion and the distortion particularly in the corners and because we don't want to introduce any distortion or, or as little distortion as possible onto the plate down here what we want to do is we want to join the panels together starting at this bottom edge and saying that all of the distortion is pushed towards the top edge up here and we do this by setting the uh, merge tool which is normally um, set to merge from the best node that is the node which produces the lowest distortion and we need to set it to merge from the first node that's the uh, because we're merging on these two edges the nodes go from the bottom to the top so it's going to merge from this node and by the time it gets to the second node um, there still won't be much distortion and then we'll get more and more distortion as we go up so this stage lets us produce uh, if I just merge those two together that produces um, a single panel with it, uh, with it merged in together and you would think that you could now just go in and um, produce the reinforcement patches in the same way as we did before with the single panels but we have a peculiarity and that is that when we did it beforehand we were producing a reinforcement patch in a corner and this reinforcement patch here isn't in a corner the corners are just here and just here this is on this merged panel halfway along the bottom of the panel I can perhaps make that clearer by just rotating this panel um, to be upright and we can see quite clearly that the, uh, the area that we want to work on is in the middle of the bottom of the panel rather than being in, the, in a particular corner 
and this defeats the mpanel uh, reinforcement patch program which, which expects a reinforcement patch to be in the corner. So we have to go through another stage which is a, a, a little bit strange and that is that we create an intermediate corner patch um, from an edge and this is where mpanel will go in and it will make a corner patch from an edge rather than in corners based on the point of the edge that looks like a corner and we have to specify on there whether we want it to be on the top, the bottom, the left, the right edge, we want it on the bottom edge so now we can run that tool make a corner patch from an edge and it makes the corner patch and this creates a panel which is kind of like an intermediate panel which uh, and this panel here, I'll just move it off to the side, has um, a left, a right and a top. And so now on this intermediate panel the uh, corner structure does actually sit in, in, in a corner, the corner plate does actually sit in a corner. So now we can, we can select this and uh, produce a reinforcement patch from a marked unseamed panels and if I'll uh, just pick up the um, corner patch here and move it off to one side we can see the fabric corner patch with the hole markings and the cutout markings ready to go over it into one piece. Now there is some distortion because this was of course um, two, uh, two pieces sort of merged together into one that the original um, corner wasn't entirely flat and we're assuming it to be flat and so if we look right in the middle um, at the middle most uh, uh, corner hole you can see that there's a little bit of um, dithering as to exactly where the centre of the hole is and that's indicative of the amount of error that we get in, in, the, uh, in the flattening assumption. Um, in a similar way to that we would just go in on, on, uh, on this one let me delete that uh, one there and produce um, the corner plate the actual uh, the metal plate from those panels or from that from that uh, pseudo panel, that intermediate panel, and and this time I'll delete that old one because we won't need it anymore, and we're left with our set of uh, our set of uh, holes correctly spaced uh, with a centre mark. Everything has worked sort of correctly, except of course again for this very middle one which has got which has got some slight problems we've got a slight error there but probably quite acceptable so that walks through the stages of um, adding uh, adding in this this detail information which is parametrically based and uh, producing the corner plate taking the corner plate through to uh, making the rebated panels, that's the panels with the cutouts and the uh, and the back truncation ready for those ready for those to go on to. And we also went in and produced um, the reinforcement patches either as a pair of patches or through this slightly awkward intermediate stage of a uh, of a, an extra um, an extra intermediate panel to to create the corner to work in that using that technique we managed to end up with uh, a fabric reinforcement patch and a metal plate and of course on the metal plate in particular this would be the prototype for your metal plate you would now have to add um, some other holes or some other structure to it to finish that plate off.